statement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> and uh, members, uh, California's largest electric utilities have spent considerable sums of customer money to prevent their power lines from sparking destructive wildfire fires like the devastating 2007 fires in Southern California. However, September's Butte fire, which is suspected to have been caused by a power line, suggests that their efforts may not have been sufficient. Utility fire prevention measures have not been evaluated by the Public Utilities Commission, despite the PUC's approval of rate increases to fund them. Why is this? This committee's Gas, Electric, and Transportation Safety Subcommittee held a hearing in November asking just this question. What we found was that the PUC's fire safety rulemaking, which began after the devastating 2007 wildfires, spent too much time focused on tweaking the existing prescriptive regulations and not enough on examining the mitigations that the electric utilities were actually making. And yet utilities were receiving hundreds of millions of dollars in rate cases for safety investments. This rulemaking began more than seven seven years ago, and it isn't ending anytime soon. The reason the rulemaking has taken so long is the same as the reason that it hasn't taken, it hasn't been relevant. Prescriptive, one-size-fits-all standards are the wrong type of regulation to prevent wildfires. The province of Victoria, Australia, chose a different path after its own catastrophic power line ignited wildfires in February of 2009. One of these fires killed more than uh, well, killed 119 people. What Victoria did was to develop performance-based statutes and regulations that one required electric utilities to file wildfire mitigation plans with the regulator, two required the regulator to approve the plans, and three required the regulator to audit the utility's implementation of those plans. This is exactly what SB 1028 requires for California. In addition to having greater rel relevance than prescriptive regulations, this approach was implemented in Victoria within four years of its fires, whereas we will be waiting more than a decade for the PUC to finish its process. <clears throat> and if you wonder if Victoria's model is any good, here's one marker. Victoria's utilities are required to report 37 performance measures quarterly. Since the opening of the PUC's fire safety rulemaking, our utilities have been required to report one measure. It has so far been reported twice. The Chemical Safety Board was spot on when it described the advantage of performance-based regulations in its report on the 2012 Richmond Refinery Fire. It said that the performance-based regulatory model, quote, provides the adaptability necessary to keep current with improving standards and advancing technology without requiring the lengthy and often unproductive rulemaking on the part of the regulator. It's tragic that we had to have the Butte fire to see the problems with the PUC's fire prevention approach, but now is our opportunity to fix it. Thank you, members. I have a witness. Mr. Chairman, members, Paul Smith again with the Rural Counties Association. Uh, very similar to my comments earlier on Senator Morlock's bill, we're in strong support of this bill. Um, Senator Hill mentioned the Butte fire in Calaveras and Amador County. Again, uh, Sierra, Central Sierra areas, um, devastating uh, loss of trees, a uh, huge amount of fuel loads. Um, we need to do everything we can in identifying uh, the risks, the mitigation, and then taking those steps to minimize the devastating impacts of these wildfires. Uh, electrical lines are a key component of those conversations, and uh, we're glad to support this bill and urge it to move forward. Mr. Chair and members, Greg Cook representing the Northern California Power Agency. We've been working very closely with Senator Hill and his staff in defining the role of the local governing board for publicly owned electric utilities. And as a result, we're very pleased to support the bill in its present form. Thank you. We urge an aye vote. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Do we have anyone in opposition of the bill? Any uh, comments, questions? We have a motion. Uh, the motion is due pass to appropriations. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Hueso? Aye. Hueso, aye. Morrell? Yes. Morrell, aye. Canella? Aye. Canella, aye. Gaines? Hertzberg? Aye. Hertzberg, aye. Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Laura? Aye. Laura, aye. Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. McGuire? Aye. McGuire, aye. Pavley? Wolk? Is there as enough votes that Pavley will probably come back? Do you want to hold it open? We're, we'll hold it open. I think Senator Pavley's coming back. So we'll hold the roll open. Either way, this bill gets out.
Thank you, Mr. Thank you, uh, members. We'll move on to uh, Senator Canella. Mr. Chairman, I'm here to present SB 1153. I'd like to start by stating that I will accept the committee's uh, suggested amendment. SB 1153 is a simple bill intended to help the state meet its climate change, low carbon fuel and renewable energy goals. According to CARB, California must immediately reduce emissions of short lived climate pollutants, including methane. To date, capturing and converting methane from landfills, wastewater treatment plants, dairies and other sources has proved elusive in California in large part due to obstacles and cost barriers related to pipeline interconnection and injection and lack of long-term contracts. SB 1153 seeks to address these obstacles by directing CARB to develop in the update to its GHG AB 32 scoping plan an analysis of steps necessary to encourage development of biomethane and renewable natural gas. So I've got a witness in support. Thank you. Uh, Michael Bocadoro with the Ag Energy Consumers Association. Uh, the bill is really designed to answer some of the questions. I think everybody's in support of more biomethane being developed in California. Biomethane means we're taking methane out of the environment that's in the environment, destroying it, and reducing significantly short-lived climate pollutants that Mr. Lara and others are deeply interested in. We work closely with the dairy um, digester developers and the dairy industry. And so what this bill is really designed to do is to begin to answer some of those questions. What is the true potential of biomethane in California? There's a lot of debate about that. And I'm not sure all of us know. This bill will help answer that question. What's the highest and best use? Uh, Ms. Pavley uh, talked about transportation fuel, and we couldn't agree more. And a low carbon fuel standard can provide tremendous revenue for these types of projects. We're looking at that very closely in the dairy industry. What uh, is the problem with low carbon fuel standard is it's not guaranteed past 2020 right now. And then equally important, it's volatile. And so it's very hard to finance a project based on that volatility. We can't take that to the bank today and get a project built. Lots of ways to help solve for that. There are concepts called contracts for differences than others. This bill asks ARB to look at those and report back to the legislature, which I think is the key ingredient here. These decisions are very critical decisions. How does biomethane fit in to a natural gas limited future? And reporting back to the legislature so that the policymakers can make informed decisions we think is a very good approach. Look forward to your support. Do we have anybody in the public in support wish to speak in support of this bill? Anybody in opposition? Any questions, comments from the committee? Senator McGuire? I was just going to mention, and I mentioned this to the senator before, this is uh, desperately needed, not just on dairy, but particularly uh, chicken producers or egg producers as well. You take a look at the large amount of manure that is produced and the quality that can be turned into uh, that methane that could be sold in into the open system. So really appreciate that because uh, we also take a look at the greenhouse gas emissions that are currently happening of trucking that out of counties, particularly from northern California and into the Central Valley. It's significant. So appreciate you bringing that forward. Thank you. You know, gentlemen, late and get out of their seat. Did you uh, yes, want to sorry. say something? I try to jump out. Uh, just wanted to uh, let you know that we were prepared to oppose the bill today, but we'll take a look at the amendments um, and get back to you on that. Get back to the office. Uh, sorry, this is Eddie Moreno on behalf of Sierra Club California. Okay, thank you, Senator Lara. Thank you. I think we also um, might want to include the other agencies that are also responsible for um, working in this area. Do That's the amendment. CPC. Is amendment. that the amendment? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. We have a motion. Uh, the, the motion is due pass with amendments to environmental quality. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Wesso? Aye. Wesso, aye. Morrell? Aye. Morrell, aye. Canella? Aye. Canella, aye. Gaines? Hertzberg? Aye. Hertzberg, aye. Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Laura? Aye. Laura, aye. Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. McGuire? Aye. McGuire, aye. Pavley? Aye. Pavley, aye. Wolk. Has everybody's vote. Now, now that uh, Senator Pavley's here, can we get her on the previous bill? Uh, okay, Senator, uh, bill was the last? Bill. Senator Hill's bill. I'd like to get that her on there so we can close close okay. the roll on that one. Okay. Do pass to appropriations, current vote 8-0. This is with SB 1028, Hill's bill. Gaines, Pavley, Pavley I, Wolk. We'll close out that bill. That bill is out. Can we also go to SB 1035 uh, and call SB 35, 1035 is the 
my bill, Wesso bill, to pass to rules. It goes to rules? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because okay. it was amended and another committee might want it. So. Okay, then um, we'll, we'll pass it to rules. Clerk, please call the roll. Uh, uh, please call the absent members. Okay. Um, do you pass to rules SB 1035 voice? So current vote 5 2. Gaines, Hertzberg, Laura, Aye. Laura I, Wolk. Okay, that, uh, six to two, that bill is out. What else do we have? Uh, on, can we get, uh, uh, did we close the roll on those? Uh, uh, oh. oh, Ellen, uh, SP 1043, Ellen. Well, let's get that one out as well. Do Clerk, please uh, do call the absent sorry. members. Do pass is amended to environmental quality, mm. current vote five zero. Morell, Canella, Gaines, Laura. Laura I. McGuire. Aye. McGuire I. Wolk. 7-0. Seven, 7-0, seven, seven, that bill's out. We'll move on to uh, Senator McGuire's bill, SP 1250. Let me see. So which ones are out? Show them here. Um, Name them out in, in num oh, item number. Do the Leno bill. Um, Leno bill's Laura. out? No, Laura didn't get to vote. Do you want to open that roll really fast? Yeah, While he's getting ready, we're going to open the roll on Leno SB 1441. Uh, do you pass with amendments to environmental quality. Uh, clerk, please call the absent members. Current vote 7 0. Morell? No. Morell, no. Gaines? Lara? Aye. Lara, I. Walk. So it's 8 to 1. 8, eight to 1. That, that bill is out. is out. We'll close the roll on that bill. Okay. Oh, and then do you want to redo this? That it's not going to be amended here, but amended in natural resources. While we're at it, um, Morlock SB 1463 was supposed to be uh, moved to be amended in natural resources and water. So we have our the chair of that committee here. We're, she's entrusted with the requirement <laughs> to add those amendments oh, yeah. that were approved yes. in this committee. Very well, wonderful, thank you. And we have an eight to zero vote count on that. We want to call the absent members on SB 1463. Um, do pass to be amended in natural resources and water, SB 1463. Uh, current vote eight zero. Gaines? Aye. McGuire? Aye. McGuire, I. Wolk. So that bills out. Nine zero, that bills out. Very well.